What is up, my beautiful friends? Hey, this is gonna be a different video. I fall in love with this bot, the Raven. There's been a lot of moves that I was able to pull off with this bot that I have never been able to pull off with the Griffin. And the Griffin and, and the Falcon, uh, not the Falcon, the, uh, the Raven are very similar in every single way, except for the jump height and the jump distance and having two jumps. Uh, I think it also has maybe a little bit, a little bit more HP and the speed is 44 kilometers per hour versus the 35. I think the 35 is the top for the Griffin. Please forgive me if I got him wrong. The Griffin isn't the bot that I use on a regular basis anymore <laughs> for the obvious reasons. I'm going to show you some some specific plays that I've extracted from some of the videos that I've had recorded the last couple of weeks and then kind of mesh them all together, mesh them together with the tips that I kind of would be sharing with you to help you become a better Raven pilot, but it's not necessarily the Raven that you can be better at. Some of the things could be applied to you using a Haichi or a Kumio or a Destrier at level one, which is, you know, just basic gameplay. Instead of using these like letter boxes and arrows and highlights and stuff like that, I'm recording this separate. I, I recorded the video itself and then I'm playing the second video and screen screen recording it and then putting this on, on top of it. So I'm gonna be able to use my mouse. So this particular play here, I already is I'm already scanning the entire battlefield. I'm already scanning this entire area of the high bed of players. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at everything from if there's light weapons uh, like plasma, geckos, uh, fluxes. Am I seeing rockets, Tolumbus's pins, tridents? Am I seeing um, bolts of lightning, Zeus, scourge? The uh, <laughs> it looks like a a uh, a water gun. I don't the the blaster, the sparkle, the spark, the sparkle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking for all of those because I have a bot that does not have a physical shield and I do not have an Ansel shield. At this distance, I'm looking at, you know, rockets like hydras and spirals coming towards me and I want to be able to block them. So I got to be very cautious. These guys over here, I'm already going for Titan because he's he's closest to me and my, my punishers would be able to try, uh, chop him down pretty pretty quick. And I'm not going to use my jump first uh, right, right now. I'm going to save it until I have the right opportunity. Now, see, this guy jumped. He has an inquisitor visitor and he's jumping towards me. I'm seeing him and then to to my right, I also notice that right now on Skierbot, this guy right here at 650 meters, my target red box has uh, selected him as the player to be focusing on because this guy that's right out in front of me with the Inquisitor right here, he's in stealth. I can't pick him up. But because this guy is the guy that's about to land right now with the Zeus and he, I think he has two ions. When he lands and I'm starting to fire, you can see the spread of my punishers. My spread is going up, left, right, and down. Hopefully you get left, right, because it's opposite of me. Anyway, um, the, the spray is pretty significant and there's a good chance that I'm gonna be able to chop him down even even though he's in stealth. I'm level, okay, so now, yep, he, he targeted the guy that's to my right behind me, but it's even right here. I'm firing at the middle of where this skier bot is. You see what I'm saying? When you see somebody who's in stealth, if you can grab somebody on the target lock that's in the area, lock on him and then turn while that you're still in the brackets, the green brackets that are on the side. Um, when you when you have something that's that's a that's a lock, it's gonna be on the, the far right and the far left of the screen. Just turn your bot into the direction of the bot that you're trying to hit, you know, you'd be able to do some damage. So I was able to take him out. Now I have half a salvo right here. I'm looking at these guys over here, seeing who's the furthest. I'm effective range is 400 to 500 meters of the punishers. So I'm not worried about going for this beacon. I'm more worried about these guys over here. I can tell that this guy here has, has energy. And so yeah, he's able to chop through him. But in case any of my guys are able to see, because he has a, a Russian death button, an RDB, Griffin, and we're at 463 meters away, I can chop down his shield so that my RDB right here can be able to, to take him out, even though I don't get it. I'm still trying to help out the team and get the win. This guy that's off in the distance here is Skull. He's in a Fury Zeus. This guy has burned up two of my bots already. And because of that, I am I need to take this guy out, but he's way outside of my reach. Now look and see how far he is. I'm still chopping this guy down to, to get my RDB guy a chance to, to do the damage that he needs. Okay, so now I'm getting a little bit closer and I'm timing his, so he has three, 
two, one. That's why I jumped. And as soon as I jumped, I was jumping in the direction more, you know, if I'm looking at 12 o'clock right here, you can see that my joystick on the left is facing more like a two o'clock. And I'm, I'm trying to go this way and not go that way because if I would have jumped at that direction here while I still had the cover to my left, um, to my left shoulder. Now see right here, he's still, he's still able to target me. My left shoulder is in cover. My right shoulder is now not in cover. I'm now getting exposed when this plane right here gets in center, um, center of my, center of my bot. Like right now, I'm totally exposed. This, this guy with the Zeus can hit me. That's why I'm jumping in this direction because it's gonna be able to give me the ability to straighten up. Now you see my, my, my posture was not facing in the direction that I was jumping. I ended up changing directions to, I can't even find my, huh? I can't even find the, uh, okay, there we go. Bam, <laughs> getting used to this, this is, this is kind of cool. I'm jumping now to the left so I can get right up the center again Kind of like you're trying to, to throw the ball and have it curve around the corner, or you're trying to hit a golf ball and make it curve around a, a bend or some type of obstacle. That's what I'm doing with my bot because I want to get up close because I know he's going to tag me. My health, you know, reflected it. I, I lost some health, but I needed to take him off the field so that my team has has a, you know, a safer route to get to point A to point B without this guy taking him out. I still have a full salvo left. This guy is going to stand no chance. But you see how everyone is like, oh, wow, wait a minute. Droopy's like now in the middle and everyone starts to fire at me. But I don't care because the point was that I was going to take out that Zeus Fury so that my team is protected. Okay. So this next example, I'm starting to dig into this guy. He's, you know, he's outside of that three. I'm outside of that 350. But because, you know, he's been... He's been dealing some damage to my team and his bot was, you know, easy pickings for me because of my punishers. I'm going to try to take him down and, and help my teammate out right here, uh, uh, Brace on. This guy here, I'm jumping towards him. I'm trying to re-angle my bot because I'm starting to head towards the cliff or the wall. When I changed the direction, so I was I was basically jumping into the wall. I was very careless with, with, this, with this jump. Instead of taking my time and walking straight forward like that. My joystick was basically to the left. You can see it right now, it is to the left. And that's when I hit the jump button, I mean, it was too late. <laughs> yeah, so I started floating into to the wall. I'm now changing my direction of my feet to be facing in the direction that I'm facing right now at two o'clock. And while I'm there, I'm changing the direction of my legs and it's helping me keep focus on dead center of the bot that I'm focusing on as, as trying to kill. What I should have done in this position was go to the right because I would have lost, a, I would lost, I would have lost a lot less HP if I would have gone to the right instead of staying wide out in the open and going to, uh, going to the left. So this right here, I'm seeing them going for the center beacon. Now you see how far I am from, from center. This is where a lot of the, the campers hang out. So this guy jumps, he's now in the center beacon, capturing center beacon, and he has a, um, a specter with shock trains. I made sure that I cleared that wall by going all the way to the back of, of this little walkway that I'm in right now, that I'm leaving, and then hitting the button and then propelling myself, propelling myself forward. So I have a couple of seconds and then right now, I hit the button again because I'm I'm heading right there into into the fray and I'm firing and making sure that my target reticle or tar yeah target crosshairs stay center mass of that of that spot that I'm firing in. and I'm trying not to let myself get distracted by other people um, that are around. So this next one here, I have an RDB version of uh, of the Raven and I'm having my crosshairs to the right or to the left of uh, left of him so that when I jump, I don't have to readjust where my crosshairs are. They just naturally kind of float in, into the target. So I jump my first jump, start firing, because it's it's essentially, because I'm moving to my right, they're moving to their left. It almost like, it's almost like drifting um, in cars when they drift around the corners. They're following a specific path, but that spat, that, that path is, it has that curving effect essentially. So I stay focused on them and then boom. And I was able to to make sure that when I did jump, I wasn't gonna land up here on, on top of this platform, which is what a lot of players do because they, they are not 
making sure that when they jump, they kind of uh, follow angles instead of just straight lines. This next one is, it's again, the Punisher version of the Raven. I decided that I was going to essentially run into Center Beacon and just wreak havoc because usually this has been the case with me is that when I play and I do this specific strategy that, I, that I'm about to do, it's almost as if the entire team just rushes in and just does the exact same thing and then we end up botting those, those uh, teams out uh, pretty fast. So I'm hitting my first jump. I'm seeing these guys are still outside. Now he's in my 400, 500, and I'm staying with that same target. I still have you know, almost a little bit more than half of a salvo. I'm keeping my eyes up here. I see a guy that has st uh, stock, which is probably an Inquisitor. I start firing on him, and I'm staying focused on him, even though that there's a player right here who has very little health. I'm not going to sacrifice it. I want this guy off the field now, and plus my my Punishers are gonna be able to take them out a lot faster because they work at close range, almost like a, um, a faster um, storm or gust or thunder. There we go. I'm, now I'm almost down to absolutely nothing, like a 16th of a salvo. And I decided that I was just gonna you know, do a last minute jump because I knew that these guys are gonna detect the fact that I'm not shooting anymore and they're gonna jump down and take advantage of that. And I had no salvo left, so that's why I ended up jumping and trying to take out that last that last player uh, at center beacon. I was able to capture him. So the versatility of the Raven is is unmatched. I really think that. Okay, what I have right now are it's a very unique combination. It is the Ion and the Spark. The Spark is the light version of the Scourge and the Zeus. The Ion is a light version of the Zeus. Yo, it's the medium version of the Zeus, excuse me. So these are the ions here, which is one shot every five seconds. And this is continuous for an entire salvo and I don't know how long it takes for them to deplete. Um, so, but yeah, these are MK2, uh, level 12 on the, the YouTuber account. Now watch as I zero in on this particular player here, I get one zap with both of these ions and then I get a continuous zap with the uh, the spark weapon. I'm looking around, see, I was able to take him out. I decided because it's that one shot that the two ions have, I was able to take down what would be considered the low lying fruit that I refer to a lot. So there's nothing really special. So these guys happen to just have lower health. This guy coming up has full health. And again, like the scourge, the closer that you get to the target when you're using the spark, the more damage if I remember correctly, the more damage is done. Um, so take that into account. The closer you get to the target, like the Scourge and like the Tempest, the more damage per second your that that weapon does. So I'm I'm taking his health out and health down fast. I have four seconds left of the Ion Salvo, but I have a little bit more than three quarters of the Salvo for, or a little bit more than half of the Salvo for the for the Spark. I stay locked in right here and I'm and I'm tapping I'm trying to tap my um, my target lock icon but it but it wasn't working but because I was able to maintain direct line of sight with my eyes when I started jumping I was able to I was able to not only kill him but lock him down when you when you lose sight with the target as long as you stay as long as you kind of keep that target in the the center of the crosshairs regardless of how your bot kind of, this is like irregular, you're looking down, but you're looking down at like, I don't know, it, it's like at four o'clock instead of it being at three o'clock or at noon. So as long as you keep eye contact on them um, when you're above them, the, the better your position is gonna be. I don't know if, if, it, if this was actually, yeah, I was um, firing at him and the reason why I decided to use this second jump was because all he had to do is turn around and dump his entire salvo on me of Orkins. I can't defend against Orkins because I don't have stealth. That's what you have to remember is that you don't have stealth. The Raven, it's like a griffin. It just has superhuman powers, super griffin powers. So that second jump was just me trying to get out of the line of sight, but uh, it didn't do anything for me because I ended up getting killed pretty quick. This next one, is again, I'm in the uh, the Punisher, uh, the Punisher uh, version of, of the Griffin. 
Now I'm, I'm scanning through and I'm, I'm target locking on different players to kind of see if so-and-so has, has Ansel Shield, so-and-so doesn't have an Ansel Shield. This guy is getting really froggy. He wants to get really close in grabbing our beacon. Beacon. <laughs> so I decided that I was gonna use my jump and kind of clear over this area because I know he was gonna hide around this rock here or building here or between them. And if I was if I was in a griffin, I would have landed like in this area, but I was able to use that second jump to kind of hurdle over, over that spot. I'm in a really bad spot here. I, I have no jumps. I have 12 seconds left of waiting for my jumps to regenerate. And the, the guy that's in front of me has an Ansel shield. I'm stuck. My legs are stuck. I can't get out of this area. I know this. I've been in this situation a couple of times before. So I'm kind of like trying to guard myself, but at the same time contribute to my team to help take down the Ansel shields that I can or take down the players that I have the ability, even though I'm a sitting duck and you know, essentially pray. So I'm taking down his Ansel shield, eight seconds left of my weight. And I'm, I'm literally shocked at this point that he, uh, he didn't have more than just that, that one um, shock train. So I just decided I was just gonna clear this area and get out of here. And the reason why I did that and not worrying about the shock trains is because I knew that he had very little of his salvo remaining of that one shock train that he does have. That's why I'm keeping an eye on this guy. He has, um, he has the uh, the Ansel shield, so I'm not going to be able to penetrate his Ansel shield and take down his physical bot for a little while. So it's going to be one of those waiting games. And he has Orkins too. I can't defend against Orkins, and I'm not fast like a uh, a hover bot. Ooh, Ansel shield is down. I got my second jump is, and I'm 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 keeping my my target, my crosshairs to the right of him because I'm going to the left and I'm staying focused to the right. And then I use that second jump to jump up higher. And now when you do that, they lose sight of you. They can't target you anymore until you get to a specific uh, altitude or point of, uh, point of view or whatever. So yeah, his answer shield comes back up and I was able to take it back down. Nah, you're out of here, goodbye. <laughs> All right, this is, I was in a, um, a Spectre shock train and this guy Johnny 5.0, he was he was just he was breaking us off left and right, and it was like, it was like I needed to take this guy out. It, it was a pure revenge thing. So what did I have? I had the Raven with the Vortex and the Aphid. This is crazy, especially when they land. But these are MK2 level 12. Now you see how far away he is at 567 meters. Do you think I can get there? Now he has he has a Specter. A shock train specter. Maybe I can get him. Let's see. So I use my first jump, my joystick here, which is I'm going into the direction of where my joystick is facing. My legs are facing in the direction towards Johnny 5.0. I jump my second jump and I'm still heading towards him. Now I'm closing in fast. I'm at 403 meters. I need to be within 350 and at the highest point of my jump to land most, if not all, the aphid and vortex um, uh, salvo. Even though my crosshairs are to the left of Johnny 5.0, my, my reticles or my target lock is locked onto him. I'm now at 337 and I, I fired within that 350. And I'm at the highest point of my, my jump. Now, if you remember the aphids, they used to, at, at the beginning when they were released, they essentially shot up and then straight down onto the head of the person that they're fired at. Then they just fired him oh, like like this, regardless of where you were. It uh, like um, like zenits. I think they're I think that are zenits. Um, Nor comes like they whatever. You know what I'm saying? So if you're at the highest point, if you're jumping, that's when you jump or that's when you deploy your aphids and vortex and and thermites because of that trajectory. It does that the very last minute. So I fired them all at the same time and I, I knocked them down to, well, I knocked them down to probably a quarter health and then somebody else tagged them. I'm not I'm not jumping yet because I have three seconds left, but I'm, I have all four of my my rounds, all four salvos of the, uh, of the four weapons. I face him 
I face to the right of him like I did with the uh, the Punishers when I was aiming towards the right of that other person and then to the left of, of the, uh, oh my gosh, the, the bot that I was using the RDB in with the Tolumbuses and pens. Because I'm gonna be jumping to the left indicated by the joystick going at like a 10 o'clock angle here, I'm gonna be jumping this direction. That's why I want my crosshairs a little bit to the right of the target that I'm about to fire on because when I jump in this direction, I wanna be able to easily target and keep him in the center of my crosshairs as much as possible when I shoot the aphids. And sometimes you can see that the aphids almost follow this uh, curve, curving effect based on, based on the jump of the, the bot that you're in. One, two, missed him. Bam, I couldn't miss with all those uh, Vortex. One of them would have done it. One rocket from the Vortex would have got him. So yeah, I was able to take this guy out. And now see, I have 137,000 HP left. This guy, he's within that 350, Johnny. hes I know he's going, going in for revenge to take me out. But the guy that just jumped with the Inquisitor, he has about five seconds remaining of his stealth. And I gotta get out of here. I'm not gonna waste my salvo on on uh, on Johnny. So I'm I'm down to 32,000, now 25,000, now 16, 15,000. This guy here, he's in a deadly bot. There's no doubt about that. But a wounded bot, like in a in a fight, the wounded uh, fighter is a dangerous one because they have nothing to lose. They're gonna go throw a haymaker. They're gonna do something irrational. So this guy is in this position. He's he's gonna try to save himself to try to take me out because I have zero basically health left. I need to be very cautious of how I fire these these uh, two salvos right here because one, once I deplete those, that's when that guy is gonna be able to take me out or the guy that's to my left right now. Targeted on him and boom, I fired them both at the same time. Because the Inquisitor has such a wide, like if you're looking down at an Inquisitor, it's pretty wide uh, profile. You're you're gonna be able to hit that Inquisitor pretty pretty easy. So yeah, that, that's about it. I know that some that there was like three clips, I think two or three clips that did not have uh, in-game sound. And I don't know, something's wrong with the, the recording thing in, in, in the iPad. So anyway, I hope uh, you guys got something from this and you know I, I, that we all have something to, to learn from each other. And yeah, man, we can all you know share what we know with, with everyone else and make the world a better place. You never know. Anyway, I pray you guys are having a wonderful day, wonderful evening, morning, all that stuff, afternoon. And I also pray that you and your family are happy, your family and your friends are happy, healthy, and safe. <laughs> now I know y'all are gonna be like, hey man, you screwed that up again. Why don't you screw up the next one? I'd be like, all right, cool, I'll do it. <laughs> all right, guys, uh, again, thank you. And um, if you haven't subscribed, you know, consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you get notified of new videos that I put out. Thanks y'all, peace.